Okay, this is a video to help with uh, finding the area under a standard normal distribution using table E. Um, that's going to be our objective of this. So let's take a look. So I've got two examples, one with a negative z-score and one with a positive z-score. So what's going to happen here is we're going to take the um, the z-score, let me back up for one second. I want everyone to, to, to be aware of the fact that the table E has two sides. It has a negative side. You can see here that the z-scores are negative all the way down. And it also has a positive side, and the positive side is, is going to show all of your positive z-scores. For you visual learners, the relationship here is this, is that if you have a positive z-score, that means you have a z-score that's above the mean. And if you have a negative z-score, that means that you have a z-score that is below the mean. And so table E, this newer version of table E, is going to show you the area under the curve from that z-score all the way to the left. So from a particular z-score all the way to the left, or from a particular z-score all the way to the left. Okay, so let's go back and do a couple examples. All right, so negative z-score. So we have a z-score equal to a negative 0.75. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this thing down into two parts. So we have, um, on one side here, we have negative 0.7. And on the top portion, we have 0 0.05. So what we're going to do is, is that the way this table works is we're going to take those two pieces and we're going to find where they match up and meet right smack in the middle. And then that's how we'll find our particular z-score, or excuse me, our area under the standard normal distribution. So um, we will take a ruler, your finger, a straight edge, something, and you'll cruise down the left-hand column until you get to negative 0.7. So this is our negative 0.7. And we will draw an imaginary line across there using a ruler or your finger, like I said. Then across the top, we're going to look for 0 0.05. So we've got 0 0.001, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 so forth and so on, until we get to 0 0.05. We'll do the same thing. We'll draw ourselves an imaginary line, use a ruler or something, to identify the place where our horizontal line and our vertical line match to give us our area, our percentage, our probability of a z-score of negative 0.75. So in this case here, the probability of z being equal to negative 0.75. You know what, I'm going to back up. Let me, let me erase that and say something different. Because we said to the left, so the probability of a z-score being less than negative 0.75 is equal to 0.2266, which is equal to 22.66%. So that's finding the area under the curve on the negative portion. Let's take a look on the positive side. Same idea. We've got a z-score of 1.31. So we take that z-score equal to 1.31. We break it down. So we got 1.3 and 0.01. So when we put those two pieces together, we'll get our 1.31. Draw a line or use our ruler and go to 1.3. Mark our horizontal spot coming across. Come across to 0 0.01. Mark it vertically coming down. And where those two lines intersect, that is our middle piece. That is our z-score of 1.31. That is our probability of having a z-score of 1.31. So our answer, the probability of having a z-score to the left or less than 1.31 is equal to 0.9049 which is equal to 90.49%. All right, one last thing I want to touch on, and so that was the, the positive version, the negative version. One last thing I want to touch on is when you have an area on an older version of table E, what they used to do was they didn't provide the latter portion. They didn't count that. So when you got your picture of table E, all that it had in it was a shaded region from the mean up to your z-score. 
So when you used that table E, what happened was, in, in this particular case, we would have found out that that area right there inside that little box is 0 0.4049. But to find the area under the entire distribution, we would have had to make the relationship and saying, oh, well, wait a second. We know that from the mean down, this entire portion of this normal distribution curve is represented by 50%. And that 50% can be changed back into a decimal, which is 0.50. So now what they've done is they've, they've made table E so that it shows the area from your z-score all the way, which is how we have 90.49, 90.49. In the old table E, if you have the older version of table E, it's going to have a picture that only has this portion from the mean to the z-score shaded. The answer you're going to look when you look at your z-score is going to be 0.4049. You add that 50% onto it. So you take that 0 0.4049, you add on the 0 0.50, and you come out with your 0 0.9049. All right, so I just wanted to touch on that because that's kind of been a question of, you know, go from the older table E to the newer table E, and since I was making this video, we'd have that all in one spot. Hopefully this will assist. If not, as usual, send me an email, and we'll see what we can do. Thank you.